C100. Question Look is, who is back for like the 90th time. If you can hand me your frequent Z100 visitor card, I'd like to welcome back One Republic. Oh, Woo! yeah. Radio Miles. Radio Miles. Thank you. It's good to have you guys back. I was telling my wife this morning, I'm like, you know, when One Republic rolls by Z100, it's like the comfort food factor with an artist. <laughs> you guys, and I, I mean I mean this, you guys are my favorite band to have in here and talk to. Out of all the people who roll by Z100, you guys are my favorite artists. And I really you. appreciate it when you come by. And you guys are cool as hell, and you're real, and your music kicks ass, and the new song is amazing. Feel again. You just performed it. We got the acoustic up. It's probably a separate video at Z100.com. So if you look below or above whatever you clicked on to get here on Z100.com, you will see it right there, and you got to watch it because it is amazing. Thank and you. it's tied in for a fantastic cause. Let's discuss that. How'd you get involved? Save the Children. Um, we got approached through our one of our managers, uh, Irving Azoff, um, was in courts with them to make this huge campaign happen. It's one of the biggest campaigns I've ever done in conjunction with American Express. And in a nutshell, Save the Children's, I could go on and on about all the different things they do, but if, basically they keep kids from dying in various places around the world. They're the largest child relief organization in the world for senseless causes for senseless causes things that any anybody in america could walk into a walgreens and mm -hmm. fix in 48 hours um you know millions of, of kids die from uh, so they are in the process of eliminating that and they've been doing it since 1909 so they recorded a bunch of heartbeats from kids in malawi and guatemala and we were in the process of trying to pick a first single and we had this one song that wasn't finished uh, we had like a third of it but every time we'd play it um, it's something that me and Brent came up with like nine months ago. Every time we'd play it, we'd always be like, man, if we could just finish, if we could figure out what the song is, this is by far the first single. I mean, it, ha it captures the whole new sound of this band, The New Direction. And um, the Save the Children thing happened, and the, the, the first, the only lyrics I had in this song pertained specifically to, um, you know, to uh, somebody's heart beating but not working. And it's a very kind of almost gospel type of record. Um, but... Uh, the Save the Children thing just fit perfectly. I mean, the, the whole campaign is about heartbeats, so we actually incorporated the heartbeats of these kids into the song itself. And, um, you know, a huge portion of the proceeds are going towards Save the Children from the song. So, And it's our favorite song we've ever done. It's up-tempo, which is a big switch That's up for Winter Public. That's a big statement, man. Your favorite song you've ever done. <laughs> it is my yeah. favorite one that we've ever done as a band, Honestly, hands down. Hands down. More than apologize. you all agree unanimously it's your, all of your favorite songs? It's yeah. our favorite. Yep. More than Good Life, more than yep. Apologize. See, I like Apologize. <laughs> 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 yeah, so it's... it's uh, because it's it, for us, it's a new it's a new sound. It's a completely new shift, and we're trying to do something different. Um, you know, trying to keep the band thing going in a, in a world uh, dominated by dance music. So, but for all those little uh, EDM kids, this is a. Uh, I mean, this is 140 beats a minute. This is the fastest song. This thing is. It, almost in a weird way, the closest thing to a dance record we have. So, yeah, yeah. Gospel dance. In, in the same breath, yeah. So you dance, kids. We're going to yeah. super serve we're, your needs. Just waiting right. on the Swedish House remix, and then we're good to go. Oh. Yeah, as a movement, EDM just sounds like a medical condition. It's like, it does. Did goodness. you get EDM? Yeah, my I got wife, it. I thought she was, I mean, she said she was clean. I or, or even like, my wife's so disappointed in this EDM. I, there's got to be a pill for that. I know. <laughs> and, and, you know and it's, ironically enough, you know, it's so funny, you, not funny, but it's cool that you use this song for a charitable purpose, because yeah. feel again, God, the drug makers would love to have that I song. Know. Oh, well, <laughs> it was it was between it was between either uh, you know Merck, uh, you right? Know, Merck, uh, John, J and J, Novartis. Yeah, exactly. They're all on board. Yeah. Could you see people a high color resolution thing? People skipping that field. I can feel it. I can feel again. Oh, you know, I can see that in so. my special part. In my special, perfect. Yeah, right there even. Special right purpose. That, that, there. That's really good for the old karma bank. To, you know, just <laughs> align yourself with the biggest drug companies you can find. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, it's it, it, it's funny. The the cool thing about the cool thing about getting to team up with uh, Save the Children for this single is it's kind of, as as I'm sure you know, uh, going around and doing the whole circuit and trying to basically beg people to play your song is like, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a pretty hilarious, you know, act and it kind of, after a while it kind of, you know, feels really self-serving. So actually... It's different going around and talking to people about the song with the association that it has. Yeah, it changes. It changes the whole dynamic because it's, it's, it's just not. It's not just a. We determined as a band when we started. We were like, guys, let's let's not just be doing music for the sake of music, just for the sake of being popular or cool or, or famous or whatever. And if we can actually, because if we can actually have some type of impact, I mean, back in the '60s and '70s, I feel like 
every other artist was somehow somewhat changing the world in some small way, um, whether it's socially or politically. And so this is for us, this is this is one step for us, you know, to be able to do that. You make it sound almost like you have this mundane product that you're shoving on the masses, like, ah, instead no. of that. No, and that's not, I don't want you to ever think that because, you know, what the thing about One Republic is your music instantly, and again, I'm not just saying this because I like you people. <laughs> your music the first time you hear a One Republic song, you, it like solidifies in your mind, and every time you hear it, Later on in life, it's like, oh, I remember where I was the first time I heard that. It brings it back. That's awesome. Two things that bring back memories the quickest, ironically, mm. smells and music. And music. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The two yeah, things. Music and smells. And, yeah, and you smell something, you're like, oh, wow, that reminds me of uh, Thanksgiving, or oh, wow, that reminds me of the Jersey Turnpike. There are two yes. different things <laughs> yeah. that bring back the, those memories. And you can use the two of you. Yeah. And, and your song's always, yeah, yeah, no, wow. Well, it's easy if you're in a stanky place and you hear a great yeah. song. That's the worst thing ever to happen the to The remix will be smell again. We have no. some nasty Thanksgivings. But, yeah. you know, it's weird. If you, if you hear one Republic song in the same season a couple years later that it first came out it's like oh that's right I remember where I was a couple years ago and that girl I'm so glad we broke up so <laughs> there's that whole thing which is it good is, it was too late yeah and he wasn't my kid. <laughs> all that stuff combined. Yeah. So it's cool that you were on this whole. Did you all meet as a band in, in the odd called the off season? In the off season, and you know we're gonna go and was it a unanimous thing? We are gonna do a different sound. We're gonna go. Yes. For a different thing. It was. It was unanimous actually from the last album. I mean, I think we briefly touched on this before, like maybe in one of the interviews, but. Um, from the from the moment that this band broke with Apologize, Apologize was so much poppier and I mean it was a remix. So uh, essentially, our first single, which became one of the biggest hits, was 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 a remix. So it wasn't even our sound. The song was our sound, but the actual production, the whole vibe of it, it was uber pop. And so we've one song at a time had to redefine. Exp kind of explain to ourselves and to people that this this is actually this is the sound of the band this mm -hmm. is actually what we are and I remember in album one I said guys it's probably gonna take us three or four albums to get back to where we actually wanted to be and I know not to make it sound like that every song we're putting out is some type of you know like uh, well we're just trying to get through it it's not at all like that but we've slowly been trying to m move the needle if that makes sense no totally it's like it's like audio loop it's slow yes. <laughs> Moving Slowly. in the direction you need to be in until it's comfortable enough for all concerned. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 100%. Hashtag audio loop. Hashtag. <laughs> You'll find that. Wow. Uh, I, I can imagine um, you were shock and awe, a little surprised when another band came out with uh, the number one in their name, and that band was it really. Uh, we'll talk, we're talking about One Direction here, that band oh. from the UK. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Can I just tell you what I did the first time I played their music? Uh, I accidentally played because uh, we had drops from them. We've drops from you and in the computer. They're they're on. You know, they're right next to each other. Because yeah, yeah, you've got uh, One Republic, One Direction. I played the One Republic drop in a One Direction. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, and I thought it was funny, wow. and people thought um, I did it on purpose to be stupid, which normally I would do. But man, they're, they're, <laughs> the kids didn't like that. No, they did what not. What did you do? <laughs> like, yeah. I had stabbed them. Like I had, like I had just, like it was a horrible you thing. Pierced their yeah. teenage hearts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I just thought I'd share that with you. That they, yeah. That's funny. Dude, take your I've job a little bit more also. seriously. What's that? Take your job a little bit more yeah, seriously. I know, right? Man. What the hell am I doing Get here? with it. Yeah. This is so, New York City. So do you feel like there should be a trademark on all bands named one that we just need to close out the category? <laughs> you know, it's when they did come out, it was kind of like... Uh, of course, our Twitter thing blew up, and it was there was this kind of brief moment of confusion. It was like One Direction, One Republic, and actually the same band. That, well, yeah, we actually <laughs> yes. <laughs> Basically, this whole time we've just been faking it. God damn, I knew it. Um, but um, yeah, man. no, I met those guys actually, and they they were just it's so it's so interesting when you when you meet. Uh, these like overnight sensation, whether it's uh, boy bands or teen artists, um, some of sometimes you meet them and you're like, wow, you are one like into yourself, self righteous sob. And then you meet them, some some dudes, and, and you're just and you're like, you are totally normal. And if I was 18, I'd probably like kick it with you. And those guys actually were super nice. Oh, like, they were 18 oh. and kick it category. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They were, no, right. they were super. <laughs> no, that's where I was going. With this. No, I'm I'm, I'm going on air. Yeah. Just do, yeah, totally break. Our 18 you know, and kick it standards are really high <laughs> for the record. <laughs> I met them. I met them through their uh, label guys just there at the W in, in LA, and they were super cool guys. Nice. Yeah, super cool. Do you still play corporate events? Uh, we try to do less, but yes, we do. Mm, okay, in, so the, in the off season, in between album cycles, it's kind of like it serves two purposes. Obviously, it keeps our lights on, and, and number two, um, we do one a month, and it's actually it keeps us from getting 
totally disastrously bad in between album cycles. So that way we can come and like, it's kind of like having a rehearsal, mm -hmm. getting a paid rehearsal once a month. No bands like to talk about this, but I've heard from some people who will remain unnamed that every once in a while you'll get an overzealous EVP of some corporation. Uh, listen, it's Marty's birthday, and if you could change change the words to that song to <laughs> yeah. Marty likes to yeah. fish and hunt yeah. instead yeah. of whatever really yeah. great lyric it yeah. took you four days to write, and you're yep. just like... We've had, I mean, you'll have, especially if someone's paying you, and usually if you're doing a corporate gig, you're doing it because, you know, they're they're paying you two or three times probably what you're worth. And um, some bands only have, have done, like, complete album cycles. I, somebody told me that the Killers, on their whole first album, all they did were corporate events. Like, they didn't even do a real tour. They just did corporate events. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I heard. And they're, you know, it's, you, you, you just have to have fun with them because you're you're on their dime. And it could be a Pepsi event or it could be, you know, some crazy, you know, Middle Eastern birthday. And and it's it's just... You Have just, you done a crazy Middle Eastern birthday? Like, oh, out in Dubai? We, oh, tell me about... We did, we did a crazy Dubai Middle... Dubai yeah. And we, we, went to, we went to Qatar, Qatar whatever. Um, and uh, it, it, we had the craziest five days of our life. We went to... Flew into Dubai, spent some time there, went straight to, to Doha, Qatar. Did the show for the, the children of the royal family of Qatar. Of Qatar, and then hopped on a plane to New Delhi. After that, in India, got turned away at the border in India because we didn't have the proper visa, and they they were not happy with us. They're like, I asked the guy, I said, why won't you let us in, man? I'm like, you've got Canada, Australia, New Zealand, all these countries that you give temporary visas, and he looked at me dead in the eyes and he goes, because you do not let us into America. And I was like, what? He's like, if I if I try to come to America, like you know, tomorrow you're going to turn me away at the border. You won't give me a daily visa. So. So we, we're punking India, so they're punking us back. And they turned us away. <laughs> they turned us away at the wow. gate. So we had to find a flight, and then we hauled it back to London, and then stayed up till 6 in the morning just being crazy. So. Your accent was dead on, by the way. What? I've called tech support many times. <laughs> it's dead on. I'm not letting you in because I told you to reboot, unplug, and plug yeah. back in, and you didn't follow my directions. So that's the why The best you is when you're calling tech support for like a company that's like two blocks away from yes. you in your city, and it, it gets routed to New Delhi. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, now we covered corporate events. Not a lot of bands like to talk about that because that's a, a lot of bread and butter. That's a lot of cheese. I mean, it can be, yeah. I mean, it's like some bands, are, and it's funny, some some artists, I guess, aren't aren't really the corporate event type, meaning they don't get asked to do it because if if you're, I guess, if you're too, like, racy or too, just like, if you're, contra you know, quote, unquote, mm -hmm. contra controversial or whatever, then, um, you know, you're not exactly going to get a call from you know, whatever, fill in the blank, Capri Sun or whatever it is. <laughs> I just pulled that out of my ass. Capri Sun has never called us. Yeah, they, <laughs> they What's up with that? Why hasn't Capri Sun yeah. called us? I mean, it'd be amazing to be out there, you know, you're banned and normally it's like, you know, what up New York, Madison Square Garden? And you're like, you guys had a great Q3, so we are here at third quarter. Yeah. What up? In attack. You know, office right. space. So, yeah. Dopus. You see that NASDAQ Dobus. ticker? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, now, now uh, I guarantee you companies will be calling. Yeah. Will you take risks in, in life? Will, will you, like, if you are uh, about to make a dangerous left-hand turn, normal people, you know what? I hate my job. I'm going to make this left turn and just, yeah, I might get clipped by a car. But as a band, a really talented, su successful band who, you know, makes a decent living, will you in your daily life take risks that the average person won't? I'm curious about I, this. Were you like, you know what? I would say, <laughs> I would awesome say, question. I would say probably yes. I, I would say. Last, Do you even know you're taking those risks? Oh, well, for, I mean, if you if you rent usually after a, the fact, if you rent a Vespa in downtown Paris or Rome and drive around, not knowing the city in a city that doesn't have lanes with you know one of the highest like with like except everything's dudes. left turn on yeah with thirteen guys. I mean we we've done looking back on some of the stuff that we've done and we've got a lot yeah. of thrill guilt. All right. Yeah. Why water thrill guilt? Yeah. You know, crazy like white water rafting and on on you know stuff you shouldn't be white water rafting on and you know bungee jumping and stuff. But I don't think we we haven't crossed to the dark side. We're not like going to be doing the wingsuit thing anytime right. soon. Oh man. I've done shark diving. Those. Well, yeah, we did. We went gray white shark diving. Actually, we did do that. So. Yeah, Yes, the answer is yes. Were you, were you holding like meat in your hands? You're holding no, fish, no, fish no, even better. They drop us down outside the boat. By the way, the water off the coast of South Africa is frigid, absolutely freezing. You got to wear a wetsuit. We go out to the area that they, on the Discovery Channel, they talk about being like basically the largest gathering of great whites in the world is off South Africa. So they take us out in the middle of it, drop you off the side of the boat. They put, you're, you're, in, you got a cage that's hanging by the side of the boat. But then here's what's great. They take a gigantic like chunk, like the size of your head, or actually three three of them, of, of another fish, cut it, put it on a line, 
throw it like, I don't know, 20, 30 yards out into the water in front of you and then drag it towards your cage. So the great whites <laughs> see the blood. They're throwing chum in front of you. The great whites see the fish come at it and the guides are pulling the fish right at your cage. So when the sharks come at you, they're literally with their mouth open coming directly at you. And at the last second, they yank the fish out and the shark snaps right at the cage. So, and how many days later did your testicles finally descend? <laughs> you know what's funny? MTV paid for it. Oh, well, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's, laughs> I might die, but hey, it's on MTV's dime. Yeah. I got some good footage. You know, we never run out of anything to say. One Republic. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. Thank the you. new song is amazing. You. It's for a great cause, and I'm sure we're going to hear it for a long time. Because well, that's we always how it works. So. <laughs> and we never get tired. Yeah, please, please. No more sharks. Please. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jay. <laughs>